Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to The View from the Lane, the Tottenham Hotspur podcast from The Athletic. I'm Danny Kelly, and I'm joined on the podcast today by Jack Pitt Brook and James Moore, both, of course, stalwarts of The Athletic. Um, this is not live, but it feels very live, because a few minutes ago, we learned uh, from The Athletic's David Ornstein um, that Adama Traore, Spurs' main target throughout the entire January transfer window, will almost certainly not be joining the club. Instead, he's going to Barcelona on loan. Um, Jack, tell us more about this. So this is a story that David Ornstein uh, has just written, which we've just published, saying that uh, the move for Traore to go to Tottenham is all but off and that Barcelona are now in pole position to sign him from Wolves. Uh, the story says that uh, Traore is reluctant to play at right wing back, which is has long been Paratici and Conte's plan for the player during this transfer window. And it's kind of amazing uh, that it's come to this, given that it's the 27th of January. He's been, I think I first did the story on Tottenham targeting him on the 6th of January, I think. So all the way through the window, you know, even, even from before the window, the priority at Tottenham was New attacking right wing back. They decide on Traore. They've been looking at Traore for weeks and now it's not going to happen. Uh, and, you know, yeah, there's still four days left and maybe they will get somebody in. I'm sure that I think they probably will get somebody in, but it's it's pretty bad. Yeah. Um, uh, I that mean, Tottenham should be in this position. Well, look, um, I promised myself and I promised the listeners that I, this was not going to be too negative. The, uh, this podcast because we, as you say we are 27 days into the transfer window and as far as I can see Spurs have so far managed to move Jack Clark um, despite having not one but two very high profile directors of football or whatever their phony baloney titles are um, and a, a chairman an owner who is regarded as a, a business genius at least in his own living room um, so I'll try not to be too negative but James I want to get your instant reaction to the news that Spurs is number one target and the air miles flying back and forth to Italy uh, <laughs> or wherever they have to go with Trier. I mean, they, did they put, it's obvious they put a load of effort into this and 27 days of work uh, has been trumped by, I presume, a 27 second phone call from Barcelona. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to admit, I mean, I, and, and I think I said this on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't entirely sold on Trier as the solution to all of them. Um, to all of Tottenham's problems at right wing back. But clearly, if he was their first choice and he was the player that Conte and Paratici wanted for that position, then it's quite a big problem if we get to this stage of the window now, like you say, four days from the end, as we record. And suddenly they've been, uh, maybe not even gazumped by Barcelona, but Barcelona just kind of strolled in and taken him while Spurs have been faffing around. I mean, do you very much get the impression that this deal has been kind of all but done effectively you know, I think there was a bit of distance between the two clubs on the fee, but it sounds like it was all quite close. And I just get the sense maybe that Spurs were waiting just to see if anything else comes up, which we know. And I think Jack and Charlie have both said before, that's the way Paratici likes to operate. And to be fair, the way Levy has done things before in the past as well. Um, you do wonder whether that might have just cost them their, their first choice player, just the fact they were waiting and waiting and waiting and Barcelona have come in at the last minute and decided, oh, actually, we quite fancy getting him on loan. In, in The Athletic, uh, our great and beloved colleague, Charlie Eccleshare, has written a piece about how Paretici, um operates. Now, this is, I don't want to shoot the messenger here. Charlie has, has reported exactly what it's worth. I mean, I found the whole thing absolutely bewildering. Um, this idea that he spins a load of plates so that if plate A drops off, let's call it Adama Traore, you've got a backup. I mean, I get that to some extent, but sooner or later, you have to, in the in the words of Wittgenstein, or get off the pot, don't you? I mean, this waiting to see what falls into your lap. It may have worked at, uh, at Juventus, where everybody wants to play for a team because the footballers are essentially lazy. You get highly paid to qualify almost automatically for the Champions League rather than go to Spurs, where it's a struggle every year and there's a glass ceiling. Um, what did you make? Not of Charlie's, not of Charlie's piece, because it was really properly written piece and everything, but of the actual content, James. I can see the logic of doing it, and I'm sure it ha has worked for him before, uh, and I'm sure it's worked for lots of clubs before, but it definitely can make you look stupid. And we're now four days away from the end of a transfer window with this I mean, maybe not quite a gaping hole in the squad, but certainly a position where we think Spurs really, really need a player and really, really want a player. And I mean, 
we can't read everything into like transfer rumours. We shouldn't, however, obviously, of course, the, the, the stuff that we report on The Athletic is not rumour. It's all copper uh, bottom copper bottom fact. Yeah. Uh, but there haven't been many other players mentioned for that position, I don't think, have there? That, that, I, they have not. I mean, Jack, tell me if I'm wrong, but I just don't think they have been. I mean, it's, it, it, it is quite literally my job to know, and I don't know. Like I don't know yeah. what other right wing backs they might go for. If I if I had a name, I'd throw it. Into, I, I'd, I'd mention it now, but I. I mean, they can't be that. I mean, they were t- they were signing a winger to do it, right? Yeah. Like, there aren't that many. Like... The world, like the world, is not full of very good, viable right wing backs who can come into the Tottenham squad right now who they can buy in the next few days. You know, I'm sure some people on Twitter will be able to tell me some names of really good players who I don't know much about. But as as far as I'm aware, at this moment on what day is it Thursday lunchtime I just don't know I mean I think I wouldn't be surprised if for example Matt Doherty starts playing more over the second half of the season I thought he was really good in the second half at um let's go back back to say Filbert Street at the King Power Mm -hmm. Stadium yeah uh and you know he obviously he's played far more frankly in the last few weeks than I thought he would do given the fact that Tottenham were trying to send him back to Wolves as part of the Traore deal earlier in the month but I don't know it's you know it's a mess I'll it, I don't. I don't want to um, make, make us even more of a laughing stock, but he's only thirty-one, you know, Victor Moses. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, surely he could do a shift up and down there in a con- the Conti system, as it's being called. Yeah, um, they need someone who can. They need someone who can hit the ground running. You know, they need mm-hmm. someone who can learn. They they don't want somebody who will take six months to learn the Conte style of play. They want someone who can make an immediate impact. I've heard worse ideas. I mean, well, there is part of me that thinks, having read the Kieran Trippier interview, uh, which, which Alan we'll definitely did, get on to, which on to absolutely. There's a small part of me that thinks they should have tried to send Trippier back. You know, Trippier knows he knows what he's doing. He could learn. He could learn pretty quickly. He's played at wing back, but you know, here we are. I mean, it, it, we'll we'll come back to Kieran Trippier, but just, just using him as an example, um, he was a good footballer for Spurs, a very good footballer, a slight downgrade on Kyle Walker. He was then replaced, I think, by um, uh, Serge Aurier, who I liked more than most people, was probably a bit of a downgrade on Kieran Trippier. Um, and so it goes on and on. till now we've reached a stage of downgrade where Spurs' is right, right back is nobody. There is nobody. Now, Emerson, uh, we overpaid for to, to Barcelona, um, Yafet Tanganga, etc. But these are, and, and you can see it in other positions, how from the... The squad the season before they reached the Champions League final, they've been allowed to dribble away uh, less and less and less and less and less. But um, the, 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 the piece about Paratici and all the rest of it, uh, he, his reputation was, based, was, was made at, at Juventus and they, they were particularly skillful before they fired the huge amount of money at Cristiano Ronaldo to actually weaken their team. Um, they... They did a lot with, with free transfers and things, but I don't, I don't see, see. Is his reputation going to be sullied by a transfer window in the summer where Spurs signed nobody has been immediately successful? Christian Romero has had problems with injuries. I, I, I accept that. And, and one at the moment, which, which makes Spurs look like they're going to be a laughing stock at the end of this transfer window, unless something that is beyond my knowledge and even beyond Jack's almost omniscient view of world football, happens. And are we, are we going to have to start chanting Paratici out as well now, as, as Enoch, the chairman, everyone's going, actually? I mean, it, there is a big question here which is with, with Paratici, which is, do you think, do people think Juventus were good because of Paratici? Because I think some people do think that, and it's not true, clearly. Perat, you know, Juventus, before Paratici took what full control over Juventus, Juventus were already very good. Conte actually had probably had a much bigger part to play in establishing Juventus as the dominant Italian team of the last decade, more than Paratici did. Now, Conte was the guy who built the team in the first place, which started that amazing run of Serie A titles. And Paratici, as far as I can see, and, you know, I'm sure he's clearly very hardworking, clearly knows the game, very well connected. Uh, I, I think there's a lot to be said for him as sure. the guy who can do this job at Tottenham. So I don't want to hammer him here. No, but he spent a lot of money when he was in charge of Juventus, and the team got worse. You know, he spent eight, what, eighty million pounds on Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, 
uh, which made the team worse. But um, and brought Emery Chan in on expensive free, Aaron, Aaron Ramsey, Ramsey on yeah. expensive free. And yeah, if you're at Juventus, you can afford to you say, oh, that guy's pretty good for Arsenal. Let's pay him 300k a week. But Tottenham just, uh, that's not really how Tottenham operate. And, I, you know, I think it certainly remains to be seen how how the Paratici experiment will play out.